where you're not a resident of Dudley, please come down towards the front of the auditorium. Be seated in rows two, four, or six, please. seems to be increased since then, and as such, we may continue with our meeting this evening. Thank you for joining us tonight for this very important aspect of our town government. As a reminder, for decorum and procedure in accordance with town bylaws governing our town meeting, please remove all hats during the duration of this meeting. Again, all non-residents of Dudley who received a visitor's pass, an orange visitor's pass, should be seated in the front. Uh, rows two, four, or six. If you are a resident seated there, you don't have to move at all. Uh, we just want to make sure I can tell who is eligible to speak and who is not. Uh, this evening we will go over uh, an understanding of the clickers very quickly so that everyone has an understanding of how those work, how to record and register your votes. But at this time, please stand to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Remain standing for a moment of silence. Follow. I pledge allegiance to the flag. United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Mr. Sullivan, please raise the hand for a couple moments. Thank you, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the Board of Selectmen and the town of Dudley, everyone assembled here tonight, we just want to make mention of the loss that the Dudley community suffered in the last week. Josephine Botieri passed away. A lot of people here probably knew her, some didn't. Uh, Josephine was a longtime volunteer, Council of Aging. She was an election worker. She's one of the true people in Dudley that made Dudley a special place to be. I knew her over 25 years, never had a, a mean word, always a kind word, always worried about everybody else, and always would call out, especially to Mr. Massey, about her appointment on the COA. She was worried that we were going to miss her, maybe not reappoint her. That never would have happened. So I ask you all to join us in a moment of silence in the memory of Josephine Gautier. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. You can be seated. Mr. Bossi? Before we get started, we thought, you know, in order of Josie, but now moving on to a thank you. All right, thank you. First, thank you guys for coming, but also, We've had been through a lot this year. This is our first uh, town meeting, you know, as we're coming out of the pandemic. And I just want on behalf of the board and everybody uh, at the town of Dudley to thank our first responders, our Dudley Public Safety, and our Dudley Public Health team. Round of applause, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Massey. At this time, I'd like to go over and take an orientation to our, uh, our scoring mechanism uh, for voting tonight. Uh, as you can see up on the, up on the board, uh, there are two buttons that are going to be very important for you this evening. Button 1A and button 2B. Button 1 is voting in the affirmative for the motion. It's a yes vote. Button 2B is voting in the negative, a no vote for the motion that's in front of you. If a motion is made, please pay particular atten attention to the words, the verbiage, so that you are not going to make a vote in error. If you have a question about the language of a motion, 
You may call it to attention as I'm getting ready to call for a vote. But please note that once your vote is locked, your vote has been cast and recorded. In the event that your clicker shows a circle with a line through it, it means that your vote has not yet been recorded. It's very important for you to push the button and acknowledge that you do not have a circle with a line through it. If you get any other symbol, the vote will be cast and will be valid. So please pay attention to that as they go. At the end of the evening, these clickers must be returned. As you can see, they will not open your garage door. They cannot be reprogrammed. It will just cause Lori a headache if we do not have the appropriate count of the clickers. This will make our voting very easy and calculations very quick. For majority votes, the voting totals, and uh, for two-thirds votes, the majority totals, 80% the majority totals, will be displayed in percentage form, so there is no quick math that we need to do or question my math uh, as I record the vote and call them into the record. So again, a successful yes vote is a green light in 1A on the little LCD screen. A no vote is recorded as a green light in 2B on the LCD screen. And a red light and a circle with a line across the middle indicates that it hasn't yet been recorded. If you notice that it hasn't yet been recorded, just hit your vote again until you do see the proper symbol in the proper green light. Any questions about that process? Yes? If you make a wrong vote, your vote is recorded. It's been cast and recorded as such. We can. We can. Oh, Smith. They didn't cover that in the tutorial with me. As long as the countdown is still going, there's 15 seconds that you'll have to hit the buttons. It's whatever you hit last. So if you hit one and you meant to hit two, as long as the countdown is still going, go ahead and hit two and you can change it. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> Great clarification. I was thinking the timer had expired, and I'm glad I don't have a glass of water. Right now. So <laughs> it's okay. That was good. Um, <clears throat> of course, now I was going in all my procedural safeguards and everything for it. Meaning, they would have a bottle of water. The party has in the vending machine. All right. Thank you, Superintendent Lamash. Before I get into all the verbiage related to our uh, procedural loop rules tonight governing our process, please note that the meeting may be continued tomorrow night uh, for... The meeting may be continued tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. May 25th, only if necessary. My hope is that we will not need to go past 10.30 this evening and that we will not take up any new business after 10.15 unless it will save us an extra night. We talked about our clickers. Please note that if you do leave the auditorium and head out for a restroom break, please leave the clicker in the box up at the top. Thanks, Superintendent. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's much better. Thank you. Thanks for your patience as well. I was unprepared for that. Uh, cell phones, please turn off your ringers. If you are expecting a very important text or message, uh, if you have to get into voice mode, please exit the auditorium out into the cafeteria or outdoors uh, to provide everybody with the proper attention uh, for our uh, meeting in here tonight. Procedural rules this evening are in accordance with the town bylaws and are available by the town clerk, the town website, and the public library. If you are in doubt on a specific point, you should consult the primary sources of authority, which are Mass General Law, bylaws of the town of Dudley, and Robert's Rules of Order. Use of the restrooms, again, please make sure you leave your clicker at the front and pick it up when you come back in. You will be issued a new clicker. In the event that there is an emergency and we need to have an emergency egress, please note the exits at the far right rear, the left into the calf and exiting that door. We do have exits up on stage here as well. At the conclusion of the meeting, we ask that you do so in an orderly fashion, uh, returning your clickers and exiting through uh, any of the exit doors that are staffed by ushers who will be collecting the clickers. Please only exit doors that are staffed by the ushers so we can guarantee return of those clickers. 
In order to be recognized this evening, please stand in your seat when it is time for public comment or question. I will go ahead and address you as best I can. Some of you are recognized by names, even with the mask. If I don't, I will point out uh, the general location. And please approach the microphone. When you've approached the microphone, you will go ahead and state your name and address for the record. At that time, we'll go ahead and entertain your remarks or comments. Please be sure to state your name and address each time you remark this evening at the microphone. Through unanimous consent, I request that the clarification of a departmental budget item or other article be required that employees or agents acting on behalf of the town of Dudley who are not residents be permitted to speak. Are there any in opposition to this rule this evening? Marvelous. Through unanimous consent, we will permit non-residents to speak this evening for clarification purposes as identified uh, through the chair. As a point of information, we do have town council this evening, Michelle Rendaza of KP Law seated in the front uh, of the middle second row, uh, who will be available and consulted at times, should I get any, any procedural difficulties or we need any points of clarification relative to the law. During debate, you must speak only to the issues. You may not make a personal remark about others or impunge their motives, impugn their motives, sorry. You may not cheer or jeer. Please keep a sense of decorum about the auditorium so that way we have due respect. Make opinions based on your judgments of articles and statements made by others by casting your vote. Please hold applause and cheers or anything like that during any portion of this evening's meetings. Typically, according to our bylaws, you may speak to a motion and your comments are limited to 10 minutes each time. All questions must be addressed through the chair. If you do ask a question, you do not lose the floor and the answer is part of your speaking time. As Robert's Rules of Order permits speakers to speak of 10 minutes in duration, I ask that through unanimous consent for a rule of the meeting limiting debate to five minutes per speaker. Are there any objections to adopting that rule for this evening? Wonderful, seeing no objection through unanimous consent, there will be a five minute time limit per speaker for all of this meeting's debates. That does not mean that you have only five minutes for the evening, you have five minutes for each individual debate. So you can go to the mic for exceeding five minutes in total this evening. That covers all the procedural background for the town meeting of Dudley tonight. Before digging in, I'd like to remind the citizens of Dudley that we do have candidates night tomorrow evening at 6 p.m the Spring 2021 Candidates Night. This year's Candidates Night will follow a simple format with candidates providing an introduction to the citizens of Dudley, responding to prepared questions, responding to public questions, and the ability to provide closing remarks. Elected positions being represented at Candidates Night include the Board of Health, Housing Authority, School Committee, Board of Selectmen, Planning Board, and Treasurer Collector. I look forward to a spirited exchange designed to provide insight into the thoughts and qualifications of the candidates on the June ballot in the upcoming election. At this time, I'd like to request Ms. Smith to dispense with the reading of the warrant. Should either of the constables in the town of Dudley and the county of Worcester, greetings. In the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are hereby directed to notify and warn the inhabitants of the town of Dudley, qualified to vote in elections and town affairs, to meet in the Connie Vanco Galley Auditorium at Shepherd Hill Regional High School in said Dudley on Monday, May 24, 2021, and Tuesday, May 25, 2021, if needed, and other such times as may be voted if needed, at 7 p.m. then and there to take action on the following items. Can you acknowledge the service of the warrant, please? You are hereby directed to serve this warrant by posting attested copies thereof at the Dudley Municipal Center and on the down, Town of Dudley website, and by posting notice of availability of the warrant on one cable access channel. Warrant to be posted at least seven days before holding of said meeting. Hereof fail not in making return of this warrant with your doing thereon to the town clerk at the time of holding of said meeting given under our hands this 14th day in May in the year 2021. 
I am Kim Hassan, Carrie Ziganevich, John Mossy, Jason Joshua. I have notified and warned the inhabitants of the town of Dudley by signing, by posting up attested copies of the same at the Dudley Municipal Center on May 14th of May, I'm sorry, on the 14th of May, 2021. I also observed it posted on the town's website in notice of availability on the Dudley Cable Access Channel on the 14th of May, 2021. Thereby making my return to the Dudley Town Clerk on the 14th of May, 2021, Jonathan J. Ruda, Constable, Town of Dudley. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Article 1. To see if the town will vote to receive the reports of the several town officers and all committees or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Mayor. The Finance Appropriation and Advisory Committee recommends you pass Article 1 as written, and I so move. Second. The motion's been made and seconded. Discussion for Article 1? Hearing none, please cast your vote. This is our first test for the evening. 1A for yes, 2A, uh, 2B for no. See, we have a majority in the affirmative. Article 1 passes. Article 2, Board of Selectmen hearing committee recommendations to hear and act on the recommendations of the Board of Selectmen and the Finance and Appropriation and Advisory Committee or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Mayor. The FAA recommends you pass Article 2 as written and I so move. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Discussion? Hearing none. Article 2, please cast your vote. All in favor? Unanimous. Article 3, FY 2021 Supplemental Budget Appropriations. To see if the town will vote to determine the sums of money the town will raise and appropriate, borrow, or transfer from any available funds to defray the supplemental charges and expenses of the town, and including debt and interest for fiscal year 2021, or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Mayor? The FAA recommends you pass Article 3 as written, and I so move. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Discussion? Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none at this time, please cast your vote. 1A for yay, 2B for nay. Fifteen seconds does seem rather long, but it goes by quickly when you're up here in the bright lights. That passes with the majority. Article 4, FY 2022 budget, to see if the town will vote to determine the sums of money the town will raise and appropriate, borrow or transfer from available funds to defray the charges and expenses of the town and provide for a reserve fund or funds determining the compensation for elected offices and including debt and interest for the ensuing fiscal year beginning on July 1, 2021, or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Mayor. The FAA recommends that you pass Article 4 as printed in the warrant, including the sources and use of funds, including the stabilization fund, and totaling 
$882,743 to defray the charges and expenses of the town and to provide a reserve fund. Determine the compensation for elected office for ensuing year beginning on July 1st, 2021 and including payment of debt and interest. Uh, Two thirds vote required. And I so move. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the FY22 budget, Article 4? Yes. Please state the name and address for the record. Motion Lake, Parents 27, Hickory Drive. Um, I see in the revenue, um, I don't see the revenue from the solar farms. We addressed this in the past. Uh, um, under what revenue are they included? Mr. Ruda. the mic, we will take the mask off. I mean, in summary, uh, Mr. Ruda's last portion of the response was at the end of the fiscal year and the closing, the, the breakouts aren't wholly available at this point in time, total figures are, uh, but that is some information that certainly can be provided in the future uh, as, as the year progresses on. Does that help? Yes. All right, you're welcome. Yes. Thank you very much for the water. It is wet and it is very, very satisfying. Oh, that's going to make this very difficult for me. Yeah, we're going to need to do something else with those lights, please. <laughs> Thank you. The, that's the current salary proposed for FY22, the entire salary of the month. I'm sorry, you say it's proposed for them. Does that mean? Well, it's, that's what's been budgeted for 22. But is it an increase in their current salary? No. So it's the same as what Neither, they neither salary includes an increase. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Canty. Seeing no additional questions or, or hands for comment at this time, uh, Article 4, uh, please cast your vote. This does require a two-thirds majority. Establish fiscal year 2022 spending limits for the revolving funds set forth in Article 45 of the town's general bylaws as follows, or take any other action relative thereto. Arrest warrant services, $10,000. Animal care, $15,000. Board of Health Education programs, $1,000. Cemetery fees, $5,000. COA meals, $5,000. Cruiser use, $50,000. Electric vehicle charging stations, $10,000. Fire penalties or violations, $7,500. Fire outside details, 
Fires, firearms permit services, $20,000. Genealogy services, $3,000. Town gift shop, $2,000. Hazardous materials collection, $9,000. Inspector services, $80,000. Library lost books, $5,000. Municipal hearings, $2,000. Planning documents, $1,000. Regulatory compliance, $50,000. Tax title fees, $75,000. Veteran Bricks Memorial, $6,000, and the website, $3,000. Mr. Mayor. FAA recommends you pass Article 5 as written, and I so move. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Discussion, Article 5. Seeing none, all in favor of Article 5. Please cast your votes. We're not doing the voice vote. Article 5 passes with the majority. Article 6, special legislation petition increase in all alcohol package store licenses to see if the town would vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen acting as the local licensing board to petition the general court for special legislation to grant up to three additional licenses under the provision of Section 15, General Law, Chapter 138, sale of all alcohol beverages to be drunk off the premises, or take any other action relative there to. Section 2, this act shall take effect upon its passage. Mr. Siganovich. Hello, everyone. I move to approve Article 6 as printed in the warrant. Second. Article been, uh, motion's been made and seconded a discussion for Article 6. <laughs> Seeing none at this time, call for a vote on Article 6, special legislation petition. Six passes with the majority. Article 7, amend Chapter 85, Section 3 of the General Bylaws, Scribner error, to see if the town will vote to amend Chapter 85, Section 3 of the town's general bylaws due to a Scribner error by deleting the stricken through text and adding the bold text as follows. The commission shall be charged with the recreation programs designed by the commission and approved by the Board of Selection. The strike committee, insert commission, shall operate within the Commonwealth's guidelines and the Town of Dudley's requirements for a town committee, or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Siganovich. I move to approve Article 7 as printed in the warrant. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Discussion on Article 7. Seeing none, Article 7, please cast your vote. <coughs> Article 7 passes with the majority. Article 8, amend Chapter 254, Section 2D of the General Bylaws, a Scribner error, to see if the town will vote to amend Chapter 245, Section 2D of the town's general bylaws due to a Scribner error by deleting the stricken through text and adding the bolded text as follows. Refuse, rubbish, garbage, litter, <coughs> or other discarded or abandoned objects, ordinance, and accumulations, or take any other action relative thereto. Striking bylaws, adding ordinance. Mr. Siganovich. I move to amend Chapter 254, Section 2, Definitions D, under Pollutant, as printed in the warrant. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion for Article 8? Yes, Ms. Smith.
We can rescind the motion. I can rescind. Yes. And then can we make it again with this spelling error for the ordinance? Ordinance? Yeah, we want to put that in the thing too. Oh, thank you. I thought that was a separate piece. I'd like to rescind my earlier motion. I'd like to move to amend Chapter 254, Section 2, Definitions D under pollutant as printed in the warrant, and also it is ordinance, not ordinance. No I. Motion's been made. Sorry. I have a second. I have a second. Excellent. Thank you. Good catch, Mrs. Smith. Uh, is there any discussion on Article 8 with the Scrivener's Error corrected and the printed word ordinance uh, being correct? Seeing none, please cast your vote for Article 8. Unanimous. Article 9, amend chapter 254, section 7G of the general bylaws, Scrivener's error, to see if the town will vote to amend chapter 245, section 7G of the town's general bylaws due to, a, due to a Scrivener error by deleting the stricken through text and adding the bolded text as follows. Uncontaminated water originating from residential pumping, including air conditioning, condensation, and water from exterior, strike fountain, insert foundation or footing drains, not including active groundwater dewatering systems, or take any other action relative thereto. Yeah. Mr. Siganovich. I move to approve Article 9 as printed in the warrant. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Discussion on Article 9. Seeing none, call for a vote on Article 9. That is unanimous. Article 10, brine making machine. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, borrow, or transfer from available funds the sum of $110,000 in zero cents or other such sum for the purchase of chemical road treatment system with associated equipment as recommended by the Capital Improvement Planning Committee or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Mayock. The FAA recommends that we pass over Article 10 and I so move. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to pass over Article 10. Is there discussion? Please uh, cast your vote for passing over Article 10. over Article uh, 10, please say aye. aye. All those opposed? Majority that has passed. Article 11, authorized vehicle purchase. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, borrow, or transfer from available funds the total sum of $90,000.00 or some such sum for the replacement of the highway department foreman's truck and the building grounds, cemeteries, and parks truck, and associated warning and communications equipment, as recommended by the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Mayock. The FAA recommends that we pass over Article 11 and I so move. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to pass over Article 11. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, please.
please uh, cast your vote for passing over Article 11. We've done this many, many times before. All those in favor of passing Article 11 over, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? That is unanimous. Article 12, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate borrow or transfer from available funds the sum of $58,000.00 or some such sum for the purchase of a police cruiser with associated equipment as recommended by the Capital Improvement Planning Committee or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Mayock. The FAA recommends that you pass over Article 12, and I so move. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to pass over Article 12. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll call for that voice vote on passing over Article 12. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Unanimous. Article 13, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate borrow or transfer from available funds the sum of $350,000.00 or some such sum for the purchase of two large dump truck chassis as recommended by the Capital Improvement Planning Committee or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Mayock. The FAA recommends that you appropriate the sum of $350,000 for the purpose set forth in Article 13 of the Warren that to, the, to fund this appropriation, the treasurer, with approval of the Board of Selectmen, is authorized to borrow said amount pursuant to General Law, Chapter 44, Subsection 7 or 8, or any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds and notes of that town thereafter. Therefore, any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium apply to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of the cost approved, approved by this vote. In accordance with the general law, chapter 44, subsection 20, thereby resulting, uh, reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Two thirds of the vote required. And I so move. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion for article 13. Mr. Mayor. The funding on this, we believe, is uh, reimbursable by Chapter 90 funds. Thank you. Seeing no additional uh, questions or comments, uh, this does require a two-thirds vote. Uh, our clicker system is down right now. After this vote, we will go ahead and reset uh, the device, uh, so we'll be a little dark up here for a couple of moments, uh, but we will go ahead and take our vote at this time. All those in favor of uh, the motion that's been made and seconded, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? That is unanimous. Thank you for not making me do a hand count this early in the evening. Appreciate that. Article 14. Uh, we we want to go ahead. You can reset, and we'll just continue reading. I don't know how to do that. Oh. What's that? We'll go ahead and jump into Article 14 to see if the town will vote to amend the zoning bylaw and zoning map to create a new marijuana cultivation overlay district where outdoor cultivation of marijuana would be permitted by special permit and site plan approval of the planning board in accordance with the terms of section 3.15 medical and adult use marijuana establishments of the Dudley zoning bylaw on parcels containing a minimum of 15 acres subject to inclusion in the overlay district by town meeting. All is set forth below and further to include a specific property on Corbin Road known as Assessor's Map 210, Parcel 17, in said overlay district or take any other action relative thereto. The proposed amendments in Section 2.0101 of the Zoning Bylaw, Establishment of Districts, add a new line under the heading Overlay Districts to read Marijuana Cultivation Overlay District. See footnote 20 in Section 2.03.03. .03. In section 2.03.02 of the zoning bylaw, use of the district chart, add new footnote number 20 to the term marijuana cultivator. That's okay. And add a new footnote 20 to section 2.03.03 .03 footnotes to read as follows. 20, 
Outdoor cultivation of marijuana is allowed by special permit and site plan approval of the Planning Board and the Marijuana Cultivation Overlay District in accordance with the terms of Section 3.15, Medical and Adult Use Marijuana Establishments of this zoning bylaw. To be eligible for inclusion in the district by town meeting, parcels must contain a minimum of 15 acres. All permitted use as a matter of right in the underlying district are permitted as a matter of right in the overlay district. All permissible use uh, uses requiring a special permit in the underlying district are permissible using requiring uses requiring a special permit in the overlay district. Amend the Dudley zoning map by adding the marijuana cultivation overlay district to the legend and further amend the Dudley zoning map by including in said district the property owned by Robert Doherty and Lynn M. Doherty on Corbin Road as described in the deed recorded in the Worcester District Registry of Deeds at Book 58635, page 327, and shown as Parcel 1 on a plan recorded at Plan Book 936, Plan 18, com com uh, comprising 51.179 plus or minus acres, also known as Assessor's Map 210, Lot 17, as further shown on the map entitled Proposed Marijuana Cultivation Overlay District, Doherty Farm, Corbin Road, which map can be found on the town's website under Planning Board Documents under the heading Proposed Amendment for a marijuana cultivation overlay district and at the town clerk's office. Mr. Mingott. The FAA will defer to the planning board to make a motion on this. Thank you, Mr. Mingott. Member of the planning board, just so you know, that was by design to read that entire verbiage so we could get this whole system reset for you. <laughs> Normally, I won't do that. Robert and Lynn Doherty approached the planning board to request to be able to grow marijuana outdoors on the farm by Corbin Road. I'm sorry, Mr. Edison. Before you go into reading a report, can we make a motion, please? I can sure do that. Thank you. All right, motion. I move that the town amend the zoning bylaw and zoning map to state in Article 14 of the board. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. You have the floor, Mr. Edison. Currently, marijuana cultivation is only allowed in Industrial 130 districts by special permit to the Planning Board. The Planning Board considered the request to decide such cultivation should be allowed on large plots without negatively impacting neighboring properties. The Board decided to set a 15 acre minimum lot size for this purpose. Under the marijuana zoning bylaw, outdoor cultivation is limited to 60,000 square feet of canopy. Thus, the area under cultivation would amount to less than 10% of any given lot. The board believes that outdoor cultivation is appropriate on many farms in Dudley. The article gives town meeting the ultimate control on where outdoor cultivation may be allowed by requiring town meeting to approve a zoning amendment to place the property in the overlay district. Because farming is a very difficult occupation and marijuana cultivation can be quite profitable, the board believes that creating this overlay district will help some farmers to keep their land and active as agricultural use. The board believes that building farms are appropriate locations the overlay district. It contains over 50 acres, and outdoor marijuana cultivation can take place on parcel farms that will that not negatively impact any neighbors. There is no opposition from any neighbors during our discussions. As May 5th and 12th, 2021 planning board meetings, the board held the required public hearing and proposed amendment. Upon closing the hearing, the board voted unanimously to recommend approval of the amendment at town meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Additional comments, questions? Seeing none, and as this is a bylaw change, it does require a two thirds vote. Please cast your vote at this time. Article 15, Zoning Bylaw Change 115 Schofield Ave from IND 43 to IND 130 to see if the town will vote to amend its zoning map and rezone a parcel of land consisting of 4.4 acres plus or minus known as 115 Schofield Ave as shown on Assessor's Map 124 Parcel 12 from the Industrial, Industrial 43 Zoning District 
to the Industrial 130 Zoning District or take any other action relative there too. Mr. Mayor. The FAA is going to defer to the petitioner on this article. Is the petitioner available to you? Yes. I'm attorney Mike Calvert. I'm here for uh, Thank you. Hi, if you can head up to the mic, please. Uh, name for the record, and then we can jump on it. Yes, Michael Jowler, attorney for the uh, petitioner, J&D Construction. Uh, J&D Construction owns the property at 115 Schoolfield Ave. It's a, uh, a little over four acre parcel of land. It's currently in the uh, in the uh, zone. Uh, let's see, currently in the zone I-43 district and they're looking to have it uh, put at the I-130 zoning district. What this would do is it would allow uh, JD and D construction to, uh, to lease the property to a cannabis retail uh, facility. Uh, it meets the uh, requirements in that both zoning districts uh, uh, contain the same square footage size and that this is a uh, little four acre parcel of land, it would meet the, uh, it would meet the new zone of the uh, I-130. Right, thank you, Mr. Jewett. Uh, would the FAA like to make a motion based on that information? Planning Board. Planning Board would like to make a motion on behalf of that petition. Additional comments, questions? Seeing none at this time, uh, Article 15, please you cast your vote. to see if the town will vote to transfer to the police overtime account account number listed or some other such sum of $15,000 and zero cents from the firearms permit services revolving fund account number listed to offset costs incurred during the fiscal year or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Mayor. The FAA recommends that you transfer the sum of $15,000 from the Firearms Permit Services Revolving Fund account to the Police Overtime account as set forth in Article 16 of the Warrant and ISO. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Discussion? Seeing none at this time, please cast your vote for Article 16.
Article 16 has passed. Article 17, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate borrower transfer from available funds a sum of $17,950.00 or some such sum to fund the balance of the cost of recertification of real estate and personal property values for FY 2023 as required by the Commonwealth's Department of Revenue or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Mayock. The FAA recommends that we pass over Article 17 and ISO. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded to pass over Article 17. Any discussion for Article 17? So since we found out what the technical glitch was when we went to change the type of the vote uh, to a pass over, we're going to go ahead and do a voice vote for this, uh, so please do not use your clicker. Uh, all those in favor of passing over Article 17, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Unanimous. Article 18, authorized vehicle purchases. To see if the town will vote to transfer from water retained earnings account number listed <coughs> the sum of $44,000.00 or some such sum or other such sum for the replacement of a water department pickup truck and associated warning and communications equipment as recommended by the Capital Improvement Planning Committee or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Mayock. The FAA recommends that we transfer $44,000 from the retained, uh, the water retained earnings account for the purpose set forth in Article 18 of the Warrant and ISO move. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Discussion on Article 18. Seeing none, please cast your vote. That article has passed with a clear majority. Article 19, transfer from retained earnings to see if the town will vote to transfer from water retained earnings account number listed the sum of $200,000.00 or other such or some such sum to cover additional costs and fees associated with the PFAS water treatment plan or station renovation or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Mayock. The FAA recommends that we transfer the sum of $200,000 from the reta water retained earnings account for the purpose set forth in Article 19 of the Warrant and ISO move. Second. Motions made and seconded. Discussion on Article 19. Seeing none at this time, we call for a vote on Article 19. Majority. Article 20, transfer from retained earnings to see if the town will vote to transfer from sewer retained earnings, account number listed, the sum of $50,000.00, or some such sum to cover additional costs and fees associated with the infiltration inflow mitigation construction project, or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Mayock. The FAA recommends that we transfer the sum of $50,000 from water retained earnings account for the purpose set forth in Article 20 of the Warrant and ISO move. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Article 20, discussion or questions? Yes. If you could approach the mic, uh, name, residence, and then we can jump on into the clarification. Thank you. In the article, it was described, it was discussed as sewer retained earnings in the motion. It was noted as water. Um, we, can we amend the motion? Yes, please. I'll amend my motion to change the word water to sewer. Sorry. Motion has been made and seconded. Thank you. Keen ears at the back by Mr. Sullivan. Any additional questions, comments? Article 20. Seeing none at this time, we'll call for a vote on Article 20. Just on the amendment? Just on the amendment? 
Could he amend his article? No, amended his uh, motion? Could have voted the amendment for it? Yes. Amended? Yes, we're voting on the amendment <coughs> of the motion. First, we can do a voice vote for that. Or, we already said it. All right, let's, can we reset that one? <coughs> we can do a voice for the second. So we voted on the amendment. Now we can go ahead and see if there's any discussion on the original motion related to accepting Article 20. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and cast a voice vote for Article 20. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Article 20 passes. A little bit out of practice. We will get it better in Article 21 and on. Article 21, authorized for temporary PFAS water treatment to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, borrow, or transfer the sum of $1 million and zero cents or some such sum for the design, permitting, procurement, and construction of temporary PFAS water treatment, or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Mayor. The FAA recommends that we appropriate the sum of $1 million for the purpose set forth in Article 21 of the warrant, and that the fund, to fund that appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the Board of Selectmen, is authorized to borrow said amount pursuant to General Law Chapter 44, subsection 7 or 8, or any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds and notes of the town therefore. Any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of the cost approved by this vote. In accordance with General Law Chapter 44, subsection 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed, Pay such cost by a like amount. Two thirds vote required, and I so move. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion for Article 21. Seeing none at this time, we'll call for a vote on Article 21. Article 22, authorize the water asset management project to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate borrow or transfer from available funds the sum of $150,000.00 or some such sum for the Dudley Water Asset Management Project, pro project which is on the Massachusetts 2021 Drinking Water State Revolving Fund Asset Management Project list. The total project cost of $150,000.00 is comprised of a $90,000 grant, 60% of the total project cost, which the town will be reimbursed for in two payments of $45,000 at 50% and 100% project completion by Mass DEP and the Massachusetts Clean Water Trust. The balance of the project will be comprised of in-kind services provided by the town valued at $30,000 and a cash contribution from water enterprise funds valued at $30,000 or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Mayor. The FAA recommends that we appropriate the sum of $150,000 for the purpose set forth in Article 22 of the warrant and that to fund this appropriation, the Treasurer, with the approval of the Board of Selectmen, is authorized to borrow said amount pursuant to General Law Chapter 44, subsection 7 or 8, or any other enabling authority and issue bonds and notes of the town therefore. Any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote Lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of the cost approved by this vote. In accordance with General Law Chapter 44, subsection 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such cost by a like amount, two-thirds vote required. And I so move. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion for Article 23. Seeing none. Discussion on Article 22. Seeing none, we'll call for a vote on Article 22. Article 
article passes above the two-thirds. Thank you for that catch, Mr. Mayo. Article 23, PFAS water treatment plan and water main design. See if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, borrow, or transfer from available funds the sum of $700,000 and zero cents, or some such sum for the design, permitting, and bidding of a PFAS water treatment plan and water main project consisting of a new building at the pump station number six, parcel on New Boston Road, which will include filtration, chemical feed systems, communications controls, and related site and utility work. Modifications to pump station number one, pump station number three, and pump station number six. Raw water main from pump station number one on West Main Street to the proposed water treatment plant. Finished water main from the proposed water treatment plant to West Main Street with associated side street and service connections and administrative items including the development and cost of easement to determine whether this appropriation shall be raised by borrowing or otherwise and to take any other action relative there too. Mr. Mayor. The FAA recommends that we appropriate the sum of $700,000 for the purposes set forth in Article 23 of the warrant and that to fund this appropriation, the Treasurer, with the approval of the Board of Selectmen, is authorized to borrow said amount pursuant to General Law Chapter 44, Subsection 7 or 8, or any other enabling authority to issue bonds and notes of, their, of the town, therefore. Any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, thus any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds notes may be applied to the payment of the cost approved by this vote. In accordance with General Law Chapter 44, subsection 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such cost by a like amount, two-thirds vote required. And I so move. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion on Article 23. Yes. This is Article 23 for an amount of $700,000. Okay. Um, I was jumping to Article 24 for the $11 million because um, Article 23 speaks of a proposed water treatment plant. Mr. Ruth? Mr. Moderator, the, the, the specific question is the difference between a temporary treatment plant and a, just so I understand the question, and a permanent fix, now what's going to happen next? Uh, the water and sewer superintendent would be more appropriate to speak to that. Thank you, Mr. Zakowski. I said the superintendent is so. I'm sorry. I saw Mr. Zakowski's hand first. Sorry, is the water superintendent here? I really am having trouble seeing No. So the difference is that um, the temporary plant is exactly that temporary. It's a temporary treatment to, to treat, to remove PFAS from our water. Um, the permanent plant, the, the, article, the, the article is up now, Article 23. Is for engineering costs to engineer the uh, permanent plant that will remove the PFAS chemicals that are currently uh, present in our water um, from our all of our water on a permanent basis. Um, so this is for engineering costs to uh, to get the plant, which will be our next plant. Thank you. Would the superintendent like to comment? Between the 
Community Water Source Superintendent. As I uh, mentioned last year, when I came before the, before the group, uh, the water department is in uh, dire need of replacing wells. And this is what we've done up to this point. PFAS came into play with the state when they uh, started regulating it uh, a year or so ago. And they started with Dudley because they started with the people putting it in the wells. Um, we've had to go into temporary type of treatment. You don't just build something overnight. It's going to take a couple of years to put this big treatment center in to take care of all our planning stations. Uh, we don't know what's caused the PFAS, and right now I don't really care. I need to get this uh, system running with clean water for the public, and I need to get these wells online and make sure that we can maintain a good supply of water for the town. So you'll see these uh, articles, and don't get confused. Uh, we're starting off with the blending, we're going into temporary vessel, which is going to help uh, maintain our capacity of water for what we have right now. And as we go for more wells uh, for the next year, for our number station one, uh, we're going to end up uh, going into a final treatment facility uh, to be constructed at our Boston facility where all the uh, pump stations can be treated directly there. Big cost savings, major cost savings. We've got also many grants out there. We've got many uh, uh, low interest loans, state involvement fund loans out there. It's there. We've got it. All we need is approval for it. We can move forward with these projects. Otherwise, we're going to be dead in the water. Okay? So far, so we're doing good. So uh, let's keep it going. Yes, that's right. How many wells does the town have? The question is how many wells does the town have? Two right now. Just two? Two. Have all of you tested? Yes. Okay. Um, in my other towns have contractors And also, you know, before Mr. Zakowski speaks to some uh, uh, su superintendent's response, uh, those fixes are temporary. This is looking at a permanent fix through the water plant uh, to ensure that there's no going back to the quote unquote well uh, for an additional million dollars of temporary treatment was his summary response. Mr. Zakowski? Yes, uh, I'm not sure where the million dollar uh, fixes are. Believe me, as a water user, um, if we can fix it for a million, we fix it for a million. Um, that's not uh, not going to be uh, even close to feasible. I can I can speak to uh, the town of Westfield who just replaced put a place the treatment plant at one station for uh, just over five million, and the town of Ayr is in the process of building one again at one station for like about between five and six million. These things aren't cheap, um, and they're, uh, they're very necessary. We're gonna have to do it. Uh, one way or another, we have to get it done. I, I use our town water. I wanna to continue to use our town water. Um, I want it to be clean. I want it to uh, be free of, of contaminants. This is, uh, this is the fix. Thank you, Mr. Siganevich. Hi, uh, Gary Siganevich, Airport Road. I just wanted to share with, uh, with with you all. We we as a board of selectmen have talked about this uh, at a number of our meetings, and I just wanted you to all know that we we're in support of this. We're in support of this. We're in support of the permanent treatment plan. I mean, no, nobody wants to spend more money than they have to, but I mean, who's against? Clean water, we need clean water. And if we can do it for, I, I know they've looked into different remedies. I know Mr. Sullivan on the water sewer board is, is quite well spoken on the subject. He explained the different remedies to me and why they're going with this one. Maybe he'll get up during the last one because I had a number of questions and I left, I left confident in we need clean water and we need to do this in the board of select members. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, if the water superintendent could get up and explain like he did at one of our recent meetings 
why it's important for these articles to pass now, where we stand in the process of funding, and what is the penalty if we do not at least continue down the path of giving them the permission to go ahead and begin the process. You can explain the daily fines that the town will approve. All stuff handled at the public hearing, which was poorly attended. Thank you. Solid. What's the fine for non-compliance, George? Non-compliance per day can go up to fifty thousand dollars or more. They can keep climbing. Okay. DP is impressed with Dudley's progress. They like the way we're handling things. Uh, they agree with the way we're going. Um, if we stop it, uh, then uh, eventually the fines would come in, and the water department would eventually come and solve it at that point, and then be passed on to the town. Okay. And you still have no water. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. George. Just to answer that question, we, we tested a very 
very size of our town. There's high radar on that, so, so in that area, so we couldn't do that. That's why. Thank you. Seeing no, seeing no additional hands at this time, we'll call for a vote on Article 23. It does require a two-thirds vote. Article 23 passes. Article 24, PFAS water treatment plant and water main construction. See if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, borrow or transfer from available funds the sum of $11,500,000.00 or some such sum for the construction of a PFAS water treatment plant and water main project consisting of a new building at the pump station number six parcel on New Boston Road, which will include filtration, chemical feed systems, communications controls, and related site and utility work modifications to pump station number one, pump station number three, and pump station number six, raw water main from pump station number one on West Main Street to the proposed water treatment plant to West Main Street with associated side street and service connections and all other related improvements to determine whether this appropriation shall be raised by borrowing from the Massachusetts Clean Water Trust or otherwise, and to take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. The FAA recommends that we appropriate $11,500,000 for the purpose of financing the construction the aforementioned PFAS water treatment plan, uh, plan and water main project, including without limitation all the costs thereof as defined in section one of chapter 29C of the general laws. As most recently amended by uh, state two, 2014 chapter 259, that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the selectmen, is authorized to borrow said sum and issue bonds or notes therefore under chapter 44 of the general laws under Chapter 29C of the General Laws, as mostly amended by ST 214, Chapter 259, or any other enabling authority, that such bonds or notes shall be general obligations of the town, unless the treasurer, with the approval of the selectman, determines that they shall be issued as limited obligations and may be secured by local system revenues as defined in Section 1 of Chapter 29C. Mostly, most recently amended by uh, ST two, 2014 Chapter 259 that the Treasurer, with the approval of the selectman, is authorized to borrow all or a portion of such amount from the Massachusetts Clean Water Trust, established pursuant to Chapter 29C, as most recently amended by ST 214 Chapter 259 in connection therewith to enter into a loan agreement and or security agreement with the Trust and otherwise to contract with the trust and the Department of Environmental Protection with respect to such loan for any federal or state aid available for the project or for the financing thereof. That the town administrator is authorized to enter into a project regulatory agreement with the Department of Environmental Protection to expend all the funds available to the project and to take any other action necessary to carry out this project. And I so move. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion? Yes, sir. At this point, we're asking for to move forward with this uh, through the state revolving fund. State revolving fund um, at this juncture is um, offering us the money at zero percent interest with a minimum of 13 percent uh, principal forgiveness. Though I hate the 
term um, that's basically free money. It's money that's paid for by the state. Um, at 11 and a half, that's about 1.2, 1.3 million, 1.4 million, somewhere in that range. Uh, that is gifted back. Uh, we don't have to pay that. Uh, who's going to pay for it? That's tall, tall water. Uh, one way or another, the plant has to be built. Um, if it has to be paid um, totally by ratepayers, um, we're going to have to be creative. Um, at this, we've got about we've got two and a half, three years. Uh, nothing, nothing has to be paid back until after the plant is built. Um, the um, at this point, we have to um, we're. We've got a couple of years, three years, to figure out how best to pay for it. There may be grant money that comes down through the federal government, through the state government. We don't know. We can't count on that. Uh, there may be through litigation. There may be um, ability to pay for something. This is what that. Again, we can't count on it. We don't know. Um, but at this point, we have to. Uh, we've been approved for this um, zero interest. Um, with forgiveness, uh, and we either have to accept it or um, decline. If we decline, we're going to have to build the plant anyways uh, at some point, and that's going to be at the regular market and um, at full cost. Uh, again, I'm a, I'm a water user, I'm a taxpayer. I don't want to pay any more in my bills than I have to. Um, but this is something that has to be done. Thank you. Stay right here. <laughs> you didn't answer the question. Who's on paperwork? Who's we in the town? Is it the water civil people or the whole town? Mr. Ruda? <clears throat> as, as it stands right now, all costs will be borne by the ratepayers. There's no other option at this point. That, of that entire amount will hit the, hit the rate payers by 2023. Mm -hmm. That's not, that's not what happened. And the bill just came up, and with the new rates going in, that's in three months, my bill goes up three times. That bill is to pay for infrastructure, which was approved last year. This, this new treatment plant, the 11.5, that's gonna hit in 23. That's and not even in this new rate? No, no. So, going from $300 to $900, We have two years to figure out a way to offset that cost. And why can't the rest of the town pay for this besides the rate payers? That decision. If, we, if I have to pay for the schools and I have no kids going to the school, I have to pay for the schools. Why can't the rest of the town pay for the rest of the pay for the water? The rest of the town can pay for it if the rest of the town votes to pay for it. If it's that explicit. And it's not up to the whole town pays for this eleven million dollars instead of the rate payers. I, I didn't hear the, the, what was that what was the question, sir? I said I'll make a amendment that the whole town pays for the eleven million dollars. And not just the water and sewer payers. I don't think that amendment works with this question. No, it's it, it, it's a specific and question. How can I so if the Whatever decision is made, it, it would have to be debt excluded, which means it, as a factor of proposition two and a half, the town would have to go to, to the ballot and vote to add that to temporarily to the tax rate until it was paid off. It can't be done here at the town. The reason for that is we don't we're not talking about a funding mechanism for this amount. We're looking to approve the borrowing of that amount to complete the project. Right now the question is specifically to borrow this low interest loan with forgiveness before the October regulation makes this money a source of competition for all the towns and cities in the state. We're a little bit ahead of the game. We'd like to take advantage of it now before that money is lost to us. If we hesitate now, we go to the bottom of the list. We still have to fix okay. the problem, and we still have to pay for it. Yeah. 
Christine Sikowski. Some added information. About uh, two years ago, we commissioned uh, our engineering firm to uh, do a rate study to look at ten, uh, the next 10 years, what are our projected co potential costs, what improvements we need to do, make, and, and so on, and to propose rate increases as for each year. Um, that, that does account for six million of the 11. That was anticipated as future cost. So six million of it is in the rate study. Um, so these in increases are paying for, will pay for part of that potentially. Um, again, we don't know what's going to happen five years down the road, but it is it was part of that rate study. Um, and Mr. Zakowski. Okay, that eleven million dollars. I'd say that's a best estimate at this point as to what the cost might be. Um, I can tell you that we just took it. We're in the process of taking advantage of another SRF program, which will result in replacing water main on Mason Road and and two other parts, finishing Station One and taking care of our tanks. That was estimated at $6.5 million. When we, when we bid it out, it bid out for considerably less. For example, Mason Road came in for just under a million dollars, less than we anticipated. So we're not going to borrow that money. We are approved at this point by the State Revolving Fund, Clean Water Revolving Fund, for $11.5 million. That doesn't mean we have to borrow the whole amount. It means we can borrow up to that amount. As a water user, as a taxpayer, and for as long as you vote to keep me as a water commissioner, I will continue to keep those bills as low as possible because I don't want to have to pay any more than I have to either. The, the, the bottom, well, we will do the best we can to keep those projects down as low as we can while still getting the job done and still providing clean water to the people of Dublin. Thanks, Mr. Skowski. Thank you. Mr. Cavagnani, after Mr. Ruda. Or Mr. Cavagnani. Rich Carmignani, Airport Road. Previous speaker mentioned the rate study. For clarification, $6 million was the original estimate, probably a year old, when they had the rate study. The application was for $6.5 million, and it was changed to $11.5 million sometime during the winter, as far as the increase. Do I see Jeff Faulkner from Tiny Bond? Um, the difference between the six and a half million and the eleven and a half million probably would be uh, best explained. Uh, it's my understanding that you start with some foundational data. The reason you're doing all of the uh, all of the engineering and testing. Uh, you also build that separately because it's bonded at different time uh, time frames. You have a snapshot. You're standing 10,000 feet away. And you've got a good picture for the submission. As they do more of the testing, my understanding, better data, more accurate figures. That's, that's
That's how I, I understand this. Thank you. Yes. Jeff Wagner from Tie and Bond. Uh, just to clarify the, the cost uh, of the proposed article, the 11.5 uh, was originally based off of treatment at one site. Uh, that was worth a $6 million treatment plant dollar value came from based on engineering experience and uh, the work we were doing about a year and a half ago, knowing that that one site had PFAS. The, uh, that, that was accounted for in the rate study uh, in the 10 years progression of rates on the water system. In August of last year, a article or a application was submitted to the state to fund that construction project, and it was uh, upgraded to 6.5 based on the market conditions at that time. Uh, we were in the middle of the pandemic and prices were fluctuating. Uh, subsequently, the other two sites in town have been noted to have PFAS in them, and the request to SRF uh, after the fact, after the application was submitted and was uh, drafted by the state to approve the 6.5 million, uh, the request went into the state to increase from 6.5 to 11.5 so that all the town's water sources could be treated at this one treatment plant site rather than having sporadic treatment throughout town. So the, the larger increase of 6.5 to 11.5 uh, is to basically get 11,000 feet of water main added to the project uh, to connect pump station number one to the proposed treatment plan. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan. So to the previous speaker, wanted to amend to pass it on to all the tax base. I'm a water user, and I agree with that premise. And I don't think it was explained fully, and if I'm wrong, I'll defer to counsel. In order for that to become a reality or course of action, we have to come back to a town meeting asking for a debt exclusion to go on a ballot. If town meeting were to approve it, then it would go to a ballot to make it a town-wide prop two and a half <coughs> exclusion. I think what the administrator, he said, it defaults to the rate payers. I think that's the worst case scenario. As I said, I'm a user. I agree with you. I have no children in the school system any longer. I did it one time. When the, when the issue of funding becomes a reality, we'll have a firmer price, or probably a firmer figure, and hopefully a firmer course of action. I certainly don't think it's fair to default on the 2,200, 2,300 users. That, that, is not, that is not a way to grow your industry. That is not a way to provide for your residency of town. And yes, we have people that live off of town water, which will have the ability to vote on that, that proposed debt exclusion. But I hope the wisdom of the community would be it has to be spread all over everybody. But again, that's the worst case scenario. So I don't want people, if I'm wrong, I, I apologize. I don't want people to think they're voting right now, tonight, for an X number of dollar plant that's going to go on to 2,200 users. As Mr. Ruder said, we have over two years. This is not going to happen this year. Two years, more information, and hopefully the water commissioners will have a firmer figure. And then to the other previous speaker who talked about a committee, we do have a committee that came up with this plan. It's called the Water Sewer Commissioners. We proposed a DPW study committee a couple years ago. The outlook was to bring it to the people for a vote. Town meeting that night decided they didn't want that. So the, the Water Sewer Commissioners are your elected people who are the committee that decided on this course of action with the Italian bond engineer. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Additional questions, comments? Seeing none, at this time we we'll call for a vote on Article 24. Article 24, please make your Article 
24 has passed with a clear two thirds majority. Thanks, Mark. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to be made and seconded. Voice vote. All in favor to adjourn. All opposed. Meet you in the parking lot, those of you opposed. Have a great night. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Thank you.